Hello and welcome to Mish Music Now. I'm Michelle Weir and today we're starting a new series and the series is called Lucid Listening. Fancy name, I know. Lucid Listening is a method of practice for listening um, in a more detailed and a more meaningful way than we normally do on casual listening. The bottom line is if you were to incorporate just a little bit of lucid listening into your regular practice, or if you're a teacher and you incorporate lucid listening into the classroom or maybe into the vocal group rehearsal or the big band rehearsal uh, regularly, people will begin to not only learn much more detail about what's really going on in the music and become better musicians themselves, but they're also going to get in touch with what is inspiring to them in the music, what they love and why they love it, and what they maybe don't resonate with and why they don't resonate with it. And that will set you on a direct path to becoming the creator of music that is inspiring to other people. Please be sure to listen all the way to the end of this video because uh, I want to give you some suggestions about what you can do to practice further and to lead people in this, this uh, methodology. And again, this is just the first in a series, right? So there's going to be more, uh, a lot more information coming along. I also want to give you a gift. So, you know, hang in there and just listen through. Okay, so now we're going to do a little bit of listening. And as the first uh, listening session in the Lucid Listening series, I want to uh, go with one of my favorite vocal groups, New York Voices. Yay! I just, I love them. And this CD, I'm not sure it's one of their most known CDs. You might want to check it out. It's with the WDR Big Band of Cologne, Germany. And I'll have a link to this on my YouTube channel in the uh, description so you can know where to get it. But that's, uh, it's a really good one. I also want to go through a process uh, that looks like this. Um, this is the free download I would like to give you at the end of the session. There will be a link to it. It's a simple one. I wanted to start kind of just easy. I mean, we're not going to get down to the nitty gritty of why the voicings are the way they are and stuff like that right now. We just want to get general impressions. Okay, so first thing to do is to listen up. We're only listening to one minute. No, you don't have to listen to the whole track. One minute is great. Even 30 seconds can be good, but we'll, we'll do one minute right now. through this sheet. I'm going to just run through every item real quick to kind of spark some ideas and some talking points. I'll talk uh, through it with the idea that you might be a teacher of a vocal group or um, you know have a class of some kind or maybe even be a big band director or something like that. All right, question number one, did you like it? Well, there's no right or wrong to that. It's a really great question to start with because it's a bit disarming and it might be even surprising that someone would ask a uh, you know, high school or a college student, did you like it as the first question? Um, you want to make it a safe environment, of course, that they could say, no, I didn't really like it or I don't know if I liked it or not. Uh, the next category is musical settings. So these are 
you know, sort of like skill development types of uh, questions that you can guide people to understanding certain concepts. The first question is about the groove. Of course, it was swing. You could take that onto a tangent and you could talk about swing, triplet feel, laying back, how it changes at different tempos, etc. Meter, of course, it's 4-4, four, four, you know, depending on your level of student. Uh, that should be an easy one. Tempo, it's certainly slow, slow swing. Uh, major or minor, it's certainly minor. But, you know, again, you know, you could guide people. They may, some people won't know, won't know that and won't recognize it. Um, instrumentation, this is the first question that may really hang up people. They may know there's horns, but then may not occur to them to say big band. Um, so it is a big band. You can talk about that a little bit, about what the instruments are of it, and so on. Then, the last lens, this is where it really gets fun, is impressions. These are all the sort of musical categories. First of all, tone color. You'll get feedback from, you know, in all, of all different types in that question. I hear their tone color as being warm and being uh, fat, actually. Their sound is fat. When they have four-part chords, it's really solid, chunky, but warm sound. Uh, that's my opinion. Um, and again, other people may have... And again, other people may have their own opinions. Use of vibrato. Well, sometimes we think in jazz choir we can have no vibrato, it's forbidden. That is not true. I mean, if you have four people in a group, you certainly can add a little vibrato at the end of a phrase here and there, and you need to add vibrato if you're singing a gospel type of song or something like that. They do use a little vibrato. They're a highly style-interested group, I think, um, and they're very individualistic. It's like four awesomely talented people that just happen to come together and sing chords all at the same time. So yes, listen for vibrato, uh, and remember that if you have a group of 15 people and you're doing really uh, complicated dissonant voicings, you may not want to use as much vibrato. Rhythmic feel. You might notice or guide people in discussion or whatever to notice that, wow, it's laid back, it's easy, nobody's in a hurry. And uh, there literally is some laying back behind the beat going on. You can, a lot of stuff to notice in there. Blend and balance, pretty darn great, isn't it? Just a fat wall of sound in the vocal group parts. Good blend, good balance. Emotions. This is a great question for everybody. They tend to like to talk about this. Like, What emotions come up when you hear that? And everybody will be a little bit different, but they probably are not going to say highly exciting and exuberant, you know? They're going to find something along the lines of moody, um, genuine, um, caring, gentle, something like that, jazzy. Uh, approach to solos, Peter Eldridge the Great. Love him. That was such a beautiful solo and worth listening to. There's a whole line of things we could talk about around solos, but for the moment we could say, wow, it was creative. Um, the, the phrasing was very conversational. You know, I felt like he was really telling me his story in the solo. Um, it felt genuine. I was believing it. That's, a, that's another really good question in general to ask. Are you believing it? Do you believe them? Uh, then I love doing a little rating uh, things where you assign a rating to each category from one to five. So intensity level, one through five, what would you say? Personally, I would give it a two. And two is, doesn't mean it's bad, it just means it's a lower level of intensity. It's not hot and fiery and driving, it's not fast, etc. Um, sometimes we can have ballads that are at a level four or five intensity. So it's not all about tempo, it can be about tone of voice, it can be about volume, it can be about attitude. See, these are the things that come out when you listen closely and you, and you discuss it. Was it conversational? Did you feel like they were talking plain English to you? 
Personally, I felt that way. They have a way of singing where the tone is round and warm and it sounds like wonderful, healthy singing, but wow, it's just very, you know, wordy, like someone reading a story to me or even telling a children's story, something like that. Uh, degree of stylization, big. They're big on style. So what you want to do is go back and then listen again if you have time. The, on the second listening and even the third listening, much more detail can become apparent. So they had a lot of inflection up to notes, inflection down from notes, sort of da 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 da, sort of connecting uh, notes and sliding through them just a little bit. Lots of good, interesting stuff. And lastly, use of dynamics. Was there some louds and softs? Not that much. It was mostly staying at one level, but there was a couple of moments where it got dramatically loud. And um, wow, that can really put interest into a song in a big way. So that was just a starting point for some things, not everything, but some things that you could talk about in the context of vocal groups and solo singing. Thank you so much to everybody that is writing in to me to ask questions, and I am uh, addressing people's questions a lot. I encourage you to ask questions on the YouTube channel or on Facebook, posted in the Mish Music Network group, because then everybody can learn from the answer. Um, people, I think, have been a little nervous or shy about doing that, but I, I encourage you to do it. In any case, do write to me one way or another and I will answer your questions. If you're interested in this sheet, it's a download that's available to you. I don't have that system automated yet technologically to have you press the button and then you get it instantly. Sorry, that's gonna happen in very shortly though. For now, what I'd like for you to do is go to the YouTube channel, uh, my YouTube channel, which is Mish Music slash Michelle Weir on YouTube, and uh, look in the description notes and find where I have a link there for the free download. And then you're gonna go to the front page of my website and sign up to, to you know connect with me and write me a note saying, Michelle, please send me the handout for Lucid Listening and I'll send it to you right away. Um, regarding homework, what I recommend you do is find a one minute or so section of a piece of music that you love. It's really helpful if you love it because you're more enthusiastic about answering the questions. And uh, listen to it two or three times and just you know print this out and write out your answers. Then if you're a teacher, bring it into the classroom and run it with your students. It's such a great beginning of the year activity, especially if you do it regularly and you want to create a climate where listening time is profound you know, time. Like there's no talking, there's no cross talk as it's going on. Everybody is just actively listening. So you want to set the stage for that right away and do it regularly and people actually will get better at focusing on it and they'll get probably more interested and more confident about contributing their answers to a classroom discussion or to, you know, a homework assignment or whatever. All right. Wishing you the best, everybody. Thank you so much. See you next time.